Hello and welcome uh, to this uh, Exceedingly Good Reviews. Uh, this is my thoughts videos, my thoughts on WWE Smackdown from the 25th of September 2020. Um, the show opens uh, with Thunder and Lightning. Again, I am getting fed up with this Thunder and Lightning. Yes, it's the Thunder Dome. Dear Lord, WWE, please stop with the Thunder and Lightning. It's so cheesy. We know it's the Thunder Dome. Uh, out comes AJ Styles to start the show, then we get Sami Zayn and then uh, Jeff Hardy. They're all going to be interviewed by Corey Graves. They've got the match coming up this Sunday at WWE Class of Champions, the Triple Threat Ladder Match for the Undisputed Intercontinental title. Uh, so, you know, they uh, all have their little piece. Uh, uh, they all uh, say their parts, but then... Sami Zayn and uh, Jeff Hardy place the Intercontinental titles onto the hook that will be raised above the ring. Uh, because, obviously, that's where the titles are meant to stay for this Sunday's pay-per-view. Well, uh, what happens is Zayn attacks both AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. Uh, but then out comes Adam Pearce. As Zayn is walking off, out comes Adam Pearce. And he says, you know, if you want to um, involve yourself like this, then you're going to be involved in the next match. The next match was meant to be AJ Styles against Jeff Hardy, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, now it's a triple threat match, a plain triple threat match. Not a fan of these kind of matches because uh, this weekend you're going to have the three of these guys interact in a ladder match, a triple threat ladder match. So why then have the three of them interact here in a standard triple threat match? Which, as we know, triple threat matches, there is no disqualifications, no count outs. So, they could still get the ladders involved if they wanted. All the ladders are there around ringside. So, I'm not a big fan of you giving the match that you're promoting for the weekend away just before the show. So, I'm not a fan of it myself, but hey-ho, that's what they did. So, we go to an ad break. When we come back, it's the match, the triple threat match. I haven't got much to say. Uh, the final saw AJ hit Jeff Hardy with the phenomenal forearm, but Sammy throws AJ out the ring, uh, and he pins Jeff for the win. Uh, okay, yeah, so Sammy Zayn's won. Uh, in my predictions video that I've posted, I predicted, spoiler alert, Sammy Zayn to win at Clash of Champions and be the undisputed Intercontinental title uh, champion. Sorry. Uh, so, um, yeah. But as Sammy celebrated, AJ Styles used a ladder, took both Sami Zayn and Jeff Hardy out, then climbed the ladder and retrieved the Intercontinental titles. And he bowed with both belts. Quite a nice scene. I'd like AJ Styles to win, but my prediction for it is Sami Zayn to win. I think Sami Zayn will win the match. Uh, but hey-ho, that's what it is. Uh, that's my prediction. Uh, but yeah, so... AJ Styles standing tall could be a sign, maybe, of uh, him winning. Sometimes the person who stands tall uh, on the last show doesn't always necessarily win when the pay-per-view comes around. But in this case, it could be. In some cases, later on in the night, I think it will be. But anyway, yeah, let's go on to the next thing. So, um, we see Otis and Tucker backstage... Uh, they're talking about the lawsuit that Miz gave to Otis from the previous week, you know. Uh, he's going to sue him unless he relinquishes the Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, so we go to ad breaks. When we come back, it's Caleb Braxton uh, interviewing Otis and Tucker. They're then interrupted by the Miz and Morrison. Okay. So, yeah, I can see where this is going. Um, while they're having a little to do, you know, a little back and forth for... Uh, Tucker's reading into this contract and he notices that it's only the Miz's name that is mentioned in the lawsuit. So Otis can't get physical with the Miz, but it says nothing about John Morrison. So he proceeds to attack and beat up John Morrison. What a nice friend the Miz is. Uh, so, yeah, that occurs. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Out comes Bailey with a chair, the chair that I uh, assume is the one that she's used to attack uh, Sasha Banks with. So she comes out with the chair, she sits on the chair at the top of the ramp and cuts a promo about Sasha Banks at first and then about her opponent at Class of Champions, uh, Nikki Cross. She cuts a, a little bit of a promo about her. Uh, 
And that was that. That was it, basically. We go to another ad break. Uh, when we come back, we've got the Lucha House Party in the ring. It's Grand Metalik. Grand Metalik is going to go up against Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Grand Metalik's got Lucha House Party in his corner. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura has Cesaro. They are, after all, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They're going to support each other, so Cesaro's there. Uh, once again, this is... You know... <laughs> These wrestlers have been interacting quite a lot, and you've got them competing at Clash of Champions for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Why not put the Lucha House Party against two random wrestlers, and Cesaro and Nakamura against two other random wrestlers, uh, and keep these guys apart, since they're going to be interacting quite a bit at Clash of Champions? You know, I, I just don't like it. To... At least it wasn't a tag match. You know, it was just a one-on-one -on -one match. So, you know, there is that. Anyway... Uh, the match goes, Nakamura wins after hitting the Kinshasa. Uh, this wasn't a bad match. I mean, uh, Grand Metalik uh, really is great on the ropes. He really is. Some of the things he can do. So sometimes it comes off. Sometimes you can see him stumble and fumble a little bit. But, oh my God, he's, he, you know, I, I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do those kind of moves. I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, he is. He's a risk taker. And, you know, normally when it pulls off, when he, when he pulls it off, it comes off great, so, you know, I'm a fan of Grand Metalik, so, you know, Cesaro comes in after the match and attacks uh, Grand Metalik, uh, no, sorry, uh, apologies, he attacks Lince Dorado, who's coming to tend to Grand Metalik, uh, Kalisto stays at ringside, you can see him, he's like, oh, I'm not having any of this, he's not coming in, he's not helping out his, his supposed friends, he's not helping them out, um, uh, Obviously, as uh, Nakamura and Cesaro leave, then Kalisto comes into the ring. Lince Dorado is none too happy with this. Uh, shoves Kalisto away, and Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik leave together. Are they going to be the two facing Shinsuke and Cesaro at Clash of Champions for the belts? We don't know. All we've been told is it's Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro defending the SmackDown Tag Team titles against Lucha House Party. But which two members of the three? We don't know. It's not been announced yet. But is this teasing that it will be Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik challenging? There's that possibility. So, more dissension. Yes. More dissension in the Lucha House Party ranks. Uh, after that, we see Jey Uso uh, walking around backstage. He approaches Roman Reigns. His, suppose, I'm assuming it's his locker room, his own personal locker room and he's knocking on the door he wants to be let in knock 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 mr roman are you there uh we go to another ad break when we come back it's another amazing wwe my hat off to you kudos this is you are great at producing these video packages they really do work in getting you hyped up another great video package here uh looking at the history the family history of Jey Uso and Roman Reigns, the fact that they grew up together, they played American football together, oh sorry for you guys in America watching, just football, uh, they played that together, you know, they, they've grown up with this rivalry, so a one-upsmanship, they've always tried to be better than the other when they were younger, so, you know, is this going to transition to the ring Roman Reigns clearly has more success. He he is a single star. He's 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 the man that the company is clearly behind. Uh, in storyline wise, you know he's come back and he he's he's definitely got heel tendencies. You know he's, he he looks like a heel. It feels like a heel. And I, I'm going to say it now. I think Roman Reigns is a heel, <laughs> especially with Paul Heyman in his corner. Uh, could Jey Uso be the one to take? Roman Reigns down. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think, you know, Roman Reigns. You know, he's he's he, he is. He's the big dog. So you know, I'm babbling, and I? I do apologize. Let me know in the comments if you want me to try and stop babbling so much. So, uh, yeah, we have that amazing video package, and like I said, it was great. Uh, it, it really worked in getting me hyped for the match. Out comes Jey Uso, to the ring, I mean. Uh, he cuts a promo, uh, uh, whilst Roman 
uh, is sat at the back in the back with Paul Heyman watching this promo. Uh, and uh, yeah, we see highlights of last week's match. Uh, the make special point to show the change in Roman Reigns' reaction at the end of the match where he's happy and he's smiling with Jay. Uh, everything looks good. And then all of a sudden, Jay leaves, walks away. And behind Jay, you saw his back. Roman Reigns expressing changes from... To... Hmm. See, I always get told that you meant to turn that frown upside down. But it seemed to be the opposite way for Roman Reigns. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it worked. And it was like, ooh, quite a, quite a nice uh, point of tension to, to leave that episode on. And obviously, Jay has now... Jay Uso has now seen this and he wants to ask Roman... What was going through his mind? Why, why the change in expression? What was going on? What is going on? Uh, Paul Heyman uh, responds and uh, comes out of Roman Reigns' personal locker room, and he responds. He says, "Look, you want answers? You'll get the answers, but you'll get the answers when Roman Reigns is ready to answer. He doesn't answer when you ask. He asks. He answers when he is ready to answer the questions. So, yeah." King Corbin, uh, we see him backstage, cuts a promo about Matt Riddle. Uh, we then get our third match of the night. It's Matt Riddle against King Corbin. Uh, I, I did like the little video bit where Matt Riddle was saying the difference between a stallion and a jackass. We're going to find out tonight. I, I, I did quite like that, you know, because he is the stallion. Uh, but, yeah, it did not work for him, unfortunately, and Matt Riddle came... <laughs> Up short tonight, uh, you know, King Corbin won the match. Riddle uh, kicked out of the deep six. Riddle goes for a floating bro, but uh, Baron, no, oh, sorry, not Baron, King Corbin gets his knees up, uh, then hits his end of days, and he wins the match, you know, and that was that. Uh, is this the end of uh, Matt Riddle and uh, King Corbin's feud? I do hope so, because it's done nothing for either man, I don't think, and... Personally, I think Matt Riddle should be moving on to bigger and better things. He should be moving more up the card. Uh, he's another wrestler who apparently Vince McMahon is quite high on, so uh, it is a possibility that he could be in the title picture going forward. Who knows? Maybe we'll see what happens with the Intercontinental, the Intercontinental title match at Clash of Champions, and we may see Matt Riddle challenging whoever holds that title. That could be quite interesting. Uh, so after that match, sorry, I just have to turn over my notes. Uh, so after that match, it's another promo uh, about that mystery woman. Uh, I'm sorry, but it it, it looks like Carmella. Uh, someone apparently has uh, noticed her tattoo and has confirmed it as Carmella, but it's just not WWE. Just haven't confirmed it as Carmella. It's gonna be Carmella, uh, you know. So ain't a mystery no more. Uh, our fourth match of the night is Alexa Bliss. Uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Lacey Evans. This is our last match of the night, by the way. Only four matches on a two-hour show. Very heavy on promos and backstage segments and all that. Uh, but yeah, so we get Alexa Bliss against Lacey Evans. Uh, during the match, we get a moment where you can hear the Fiend's laughter. And we cut to break. When we come back, apparently, that put... Alexa into a bit of a trance and Lacey Evans took advantage of this and has kind of dominated over the ad break and was still dominating when the match came back. Uh, we get at a later point, the lights start to flicker. You know, like the, the Fiend's lighting with the red lights and uh, we see the Fiend's eyes on uh, on some of the uh, screens and, uh, you know, it, it seems to take effect on Alexa once again. But this time, rather than going into a bit of a trance, she goes crazy. And she just non-stop attacks Lacey Evans, non-stop. Uh, to the point where she ends up getting disqualified. The ref is giving her the five count. She's not breaking off. She's not stopping. So the ref has no choice. He ends the match. He disqualifies her. Lacey Evans wins the match by disqualification. Um, she throws Lacey Evans outside and hits another sister, Abigail. Uh, like she did the previous week. Uh, and then she walks off. She just walks off. 
She walks past Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns music hits and he comes out. Now there's a moment, well not just a moment, you can see it for quite a while. As Alexa walks past him, she stares at Roman. Roman pays no attention. But she's staring at Roman Reigns. Mm. Is this because he took the belt from The Fiend? The Fiend is now affecting Alexa Bliss. Is mind controlling her. It's taking over who she is. Is she becoming Sister Abigail? But she proper gives evils into the back, daggers into the back of Roman Reigns' head as she walks off. Is this foreshadowing Roman's next challenger, The Fiend? Well, if The Fiend's a heel and Roman's a heel, it doesn't make much sense in that kind of, you know, heel versus heel dynamics. It's better being heel versus babyface dynamics. But, you know, it's a match that I wouldn't mind seeing. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, I digress. Uh, Roman Reigns comes out with Paul Heyman, like I said. Paul is about to speak. Speak when Jey Uso comes out. A uh, great promo from Roman Reigns. He will always be the tribal chief. He then leaves the ring. Jey cuts a fiery promo. And as Jey Uso goes to leave and he's up the ramp, all of a sudden Roman Reigns comes out of nowhere. That's Randy Orton's gimmick from out of nowhere. But Roman Reigns comes from out of nowhere and hits a Superman punch on Jey Uso. Roman stands tall at the end of SmackDown. Now, like I said before, sometimes the person standing tall at the end of the go-home show isn't necessarily the person standing tall at the end of the pay-per-view. But in this case, I think it will be. Uh, uh, Roman Reigns, he's just... He is top dollar right now, especially since he's returned. And, uh, yeah, I can't see past Roman Reigns winning uh, on uh, Class of Champions pay-per-view. But anyway, that was uh, my rundown of uh, SmackDown. My thoughts on the show. For a go-home show, this was poor. My thoughts on this show was it was poor. Uh, yes, the video package uh, hyped me up for the Roman Reigns uh, Jey Uso match. But I've seen that. that. They played the same or similar package the previous week. Uh, that isn't enough to save this show. Uh, if I had to rate the show, I'd give it a... a Two and a half out of five, maybe a two, maybe a two out of five star. Uh, because it just, yes, okay. The Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss, you know, you're further developing this uh changing character for Alexa Bliss. Yes, I enjoyed that. Uh, but the Grand Metalik uh Shinsuke Nakamura match was okay match, and for, for me personally, that was the match of the night. Uh, but the other matches didn't exactly set a high standard for this. The triple threat match, like I mentioned, I don't like seeing the match I'm going to get. Yes, okay, the stipulation will be different. This was a, a plain triple threat match. On Sunday, it will be a triple threat ladder match. But it's still the same three competitors in a similar kind of match. Like I said, the, this triple threat match, it's no DQ, no count out. They could use the ladders if they wanted to. Uh... And obviously on Sunday, they will be using the ladders because they've got to, to retrieve the title. That's how you win the match. You don't win the match by pinfall or submission. You win it by retrieving the belts. But, um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of you giving this kind of match away. Uh, maybe have all three competitors compete against jobbers or something. And then after each match, they make their claim of why they are the true Intercontinental Champion and why they're going to win at Clash of Champions. Doing it this way... Yes, it was nice to see AJ Styles standing uh, tall. Uh, well, obviously tall because he's at the top of a ladder uh, with both Intercontinental titles. That was quite a nice uh, image. But, yeah, don't give these kind of matches away, please. And like I said, the Matt Riddle-King Corbin match, I'm bored of that feud. Uh, I, I I don't mind uh, King Corbin. He's not my favourite, but I don't mind him either. He's a good, solid wrestler, a good, solid worker. Uh Matt Riddle, I do like. I do like Matt Riddle, and I'd rather see him further up the card. I, I, I think he came in with this buzz about him, and yes, I know there's stories uh, circulating about him outside of the wrestling world, but I don't want that to affect how WWE view him and utilise him inside the wrestling world. And like I said, I'd like to see now that this feud's over, him kind of move on. I, I know he lost this match, 
So it's kind of bizarre that you lose a match, but then you get rewarded with going after a championship. But that's how I prefer to see it. I'd like to see Matt Riddle go for the, inter the Intercontinental title going forwards. But yeah, this show, it was just a, a poor show. I'm fed up with the Thunder and Lightning graphics that they put on at the beginning. Uh, that is just a load of nonsense, cheesy, cheesy gimmicks. I just don't like it. Uh, the Thunderdome as a whole, I do like, and especially Drone Cam. Big fan of Drone Cam. Uh, I like the uh, different uh, aspect, the different kind of camera angle that you get, the way that it's moving around. I like that. And I, I hope after lockdown, once fans are allowed back in the ring, I don't know how they do it safe, having drones flying around over everyone's heads, but I, I do like it and I hope they continue with it. Yes, the camera needs to be of a better quality. It's not the same quality as the ones they've got around ringside and the stationary cam but that's something that they could work on i do like the idea of the drone cam and from what i've seen so far it's getting better i do like the drone cam i'm clutching at straws here there's few and far positives for me to take from this show i'm not, like it was a poor show uh i'm gonna be watching class of champions uh i'm gonna be doing my review on the show i've done my predictions for the show but yeah, this SmackDown was poor. The more I keep thinking about it, I'm going to leave it at two-star. That's what I'm going to leave it at. I'm going to leave it at a two-star show. Because the more I'm going on about it, the more I'm thinking about it, the more that star rating is going to go down. Uh, so they're my thoughts on the show. What are your thoughts on the show? Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know, because I'm new at this, let me know what you like, what you don't like. Uh, let me know any kind of constructive criticism that you can think of. You know, I, I want to do this on a more regular basis. Uh, will time allow it? I hope so. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see. If there's any um, previous pay-per-views from the past, you know, anything on the WWE Network that you'd like to see me review, then uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll get to it. I'll try to respond to as many of your comments as I can. But like I said, uh, please give me a like. Please give me a subscribe. Please leave me some comments. And uh, yeah, that was my review of uh, WWE Smackdown from the 25th of September 2020. Thank you.